On today's show, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about a bunch of transfers, but first, remember to hit that like button, subscribe button, and leave your comments down below. Okay, we'll go through. We'll be talking about Luka Jovic, a possible Luka Jovic move last minute. Also, David Onsen has some reports about Alexander Isak and a £77 million move possibly on the cards. Former teammate of Martin Orgar could it happen also Jonathan David will be one of the Arsenal targets that we'll be discussing today in addition to Dominic Calvin Lewin Everton striker we're also going to get into the center midfielder uh, Arthur and for Petit Romano the latest updates in regards to Dusan Vlahovic a bid has been confirmed everything else has been confirmed but the agent is still not picking up the phone and you know what? at this point it looks like Arsenal have hung up on their opportunity of signing Dusan Vlahovic on today's show let's get the show started bang Yes, 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 people. You already know what it is. The Kitty G on EGTV. And we're back again, guys. Do me a favor. We got 10 people in the chat already. Smash that like button. But before we get any further, I just want to say thank you for all the support, guys. You got your support has been amazing. We're on the road to 10K. Almost there, just a little bit under 300 subscribers to get there, and we're going to get there. Today, I got two wonderful guests, plus more coming through. We're going to be talking about Dusan Vlahovic. We're going to be talking about David Onstein's update on the whole striker situation at Arsenal. We're going to get to Alexander Isak, and apparently Arsenal might make a last-minute move for Alexander Isak. And would it be worth $77 million? We're going to get into that. Plus, Arthur Mello's situation, he looks close, but... How close is he? We're going to get into that also. Plus, there's a situation with Pierre Makabemiang. Will he be moving to Saudi Arabia? Will he be moving to France? Will he be staying at Arsenal? We need to find out. And a last-minute move possibly could be on the card for Luka Jovic. Yes, Luka Jovic. But yeah, let's get it. Is now a link to Arsenal again. Yes, Luka Jovic. Real Madrid striker who's been having a tough time getting game time, who's gone on loan a couple times and hasn't been as, uh, and has been successful on some of his loans. But game time at Real Madrid has been bad for him. And today, the Evening Standard have reported that Arsenal have been in contact with Real Madrid over Luka Jovic. And during this tr January transfer window, could look at him as a possible loan deal to help them out in their pursuit for a striker. Yes, if their if their pursuit for uh for Isak and obviously Dusan Vlahovic does not come through, this would be another alternative. It is not the prime uh, source. It's not a real it's not one of the best sources. The evening standard are like a tier two, I would say. They're not a tier one in my opinion. But of course we cover Arsenal news. This is the story today. Luka Jovic has been reported being lined up for a possible loan deal with an option to buy for 50 million. Honestly, I would not buy him for 25 million, let alone 50 million. But if we can get him on loan, possibility, I don't want to know what you guys think. Would you take Luka Jovic on loan for Arsenal Football Club for until the end of the season? Bye. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Everybody in the comment section, let me know. And just before we get started, I'm going to go to Samuel first. But yeah, guys in the comment section, so you guys know, this is a loan deal with an option to buy. That is what, what is being reported from the Evening Standard. But yeah, let's go. Samuel, what are you saying? I'd rather recall back to Harry. Abamian came from the Bundesliga. He killed Abamian it. Abamian came from the Bundesliga and he was very he was good at the beginning. He hit the ground running when he came to us in 2008 and Abamian hit the ground running when he came to us. Yeah, he definitely did. But yeah, let's talk about another player who did play in the Bundesliga and was actually a teammate of Abamian's. Also played in Spain and was a teammate of Martin Odegaard and also has been killing it last year in, in the Spanish League. Played in the World Cup, won man of the matches, impressed people during the World Cup. Let's talk about him. His name is Alexander Isak. This is a guy who we've been targeting oh, yeah. for a while now. We're going to be getting into this story. One second as I just mute everybody so I can get this through. So if you guys don't already know about the Alexander Isak story, this is how it goes. Arsenal have been reportedly going after Dusan Blovic for a little while now. And throughout this whole search for Dusan Blovic, we have had alternatives ready to go to, sp to speak about. In the summer, we heard that Alexander Isak's uh, release clause was possibly going to be triggered by Arsenal, which it subsequently was not, and they gave him a new contract, which was a mistake in my opinion. We should have gone after him in the summer when he was only 60 million. Now, Arsenal are pushing their pursuit, as reported by The Athletic and David Onstein. We are now pushing our pursuit 
for Alexander Isaac as an alternative to Dusan Vlahovic, as the Dusan Vlahovic deal looks more and more unlikely to happen every single day. Currently, Arsenal are looking at the Serbian, but of course, the Alexander Izak is the alternative that we've been looking at, as reported by David Onstein this evening. Arsenal would be even possibly willing to trigger the 77 million release clause. That's 77 million pounds release clause. That's what I heard today. And the main main point is, if Dusan if the Dusan Vlahovic deal is dead in the waters, Arsenal are prepared to sign Alexander Isaac. And Alexander Isaac, we are currently the favorites to sign Alexander Isaac because Barcelona were in for him. And his current club, Real Sociedad, have said that they would not be interested in selling to, to a, 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 a Spanish team. They would rather him go abroad. And he's made it known that he is an Arsenal fan. He'd want to join Arsenal. And unlike Dusan Vlahovic, who wants to join Juventus and does not want to pick up the phone for Arsenal, so he wants to join Arsenal. He would want to join Arsenal. He's been my first choice from the beginning, if you guys remember. And at this point, Dusan, uh, the question I have to ask you guys is, not if you take Alexander Izak, but is he worth the $77 million? And at the moment, that is the question I need to ask everybody in the comment section. Is he worth the $77 million? And you know what? Is it destiny that we get the guy who... Who was who was supposed to be Abamyang's replacement originally at Dortmund? The guy who didn't he didn't work out at Dortmund. He played with Martin Odegaard over there in Spain and had an amazing season. When he played with Martin Odegaard, he had he had his best season as a, as a as a as a footballer. The season that he played with Martin Odegaard until last season. So he started off his first. His first season with Martin Odegaard, which was two years ago, he put up numbers unlike anything before. He had 16 goals, three assists. Martin Odegaard had seven goals, nine assists. And they and if you rewatch that one game versus Osasuna, where they won 3-1, Martin Odegaard got a goal and assist, and he got a goal. And they fully dominated that game. It, I, I feel like if we did bring him, he'd be absolutely amazing. But can we bring him in this January window? I don't think we can. It's going to be very difficult, but there's still hope. There's still hope. But yeah, let's go to the panel. Let's see what everyone has to say. Alexander Isaac, is he worth 77 million? And first of all, we got Matt in the house. Matt, what's up? What's good? What's good, bro? Uh, I got a quick comment about, I was just driving, so I stopped and it's snowing in the East Coast here. Uh, guys were saying, like, I don't know, some, some fans, I feel like they were not. Mm. He's, a, good he's a kid, man. There's always, he's there's always a, a risk. Kid. There's always a risk when you're paying for potential over the actual value of the yeah. player. Right now. Marshall, you paid for potential. What do you call it? Pepe, we paid for uh, we paid for what he was doing at the time and his potential. When you think about Jaden Sancho, they paid for his potential. Right now, he's not performing to the level that, that they paid for. All these players that you pay for potential, you can overpay for the potential. You're, like Vlahovic, we would be paying for his potential plus what he's worth right now. But some of these guys, Usman Dembele, Barcelona paid for his potential. Uh, Coutinho, they paid for what he's what he they thought he was worth. Time. Time. Yeah, yeah. Like we can get caught into this situation. No Premier League signing over the over the price of seventy million has been actually a good signing. Bar who Van Dyke. That's it. Can you name yeah, another Dijk, that's it, yeah. signing over 70 million that's been a good signing? I love Isaac. I think Isaac's an absolute baller. I think Kepa. if Isaac came to Arsenal, like he would well. kill it. He would kill it. He would kill it. Can I, I, can I just say, can, can I just say, like, we really need to start signing some guys that are at a good age and that can integrate straight away and be instant impacts and not just wait for growth. We've got so many kids in this team. We We actually need some leadership and some some already established players that are just balling out right now, whether that's in midfield, striker, wh wherever it is, we we need some right now because we, we people, are saying, at the moment. people are saying Abamyang back. I, I think I think that might have to be we might have to bring Abamyang back if we don't do if we don't or, do things off the bench. He's lost respect. He's lost respect. He's lost respect if he's he's gonna that, miss sitter again. He's gonna miss sitters again. Why do we want to bring him back? Sitter. Well, we watch we watch Eddie and Laka miss something? sitters every week. I'm, I'm I know. I understand that. Like, that frustrated me with that sitter when Smith threw across the team. I was frustrated. One second. One second. People in the comment section are, are, are want Azan to speak, but just one second. We're gonna get Azan back in a second once he decides to come back. P PK, PK, Tommy, and Jasmine. Who left? My son. Oh, somebody. Uh, somebody left or. Oh, as uh, Okay, yo, Trevor, what's up? 
Dushan Vlahov yeah. is to Arsenal. Let's, let's talk about him. Let's talk about him. Brendan's in the house. What's up, Brendan? We got we, we talk, we, now we're talking about Dusan Vlahovic. Dusan Vlahovic to Arsenal. This is the situation. Let me give you guys the biggest update of the day. Right? If everyone could please mute themselves. So the Dusan Vlahovic update is Dusan Vlahovic's agent is not picking up the phone. <laughs> As reported earlier in the in the season, uh, earlier in, in the transfer window. Plus, we've also heard numerous reports that he does not want to he he is willing to move this summer, but he has his heart set on a move to Juventus. Juventus it's been reported just a couple minutes ago that Juventus have agreed a deal to to, to with him, like a five-year deal to sign him on a contract. But the transfer has not been agreed yet because Florentino want more money than 30 million that Juventus is offering plus a loan player. They do not want to accept their deal. Florentino's, uh, Florentino's board have spoken out and they've said they've received the bid uh, from Arsenal. They've accepted the bid, but the but the agent from uh, the agent from from his side has not con has not reached out to us. Fabrizio Romano has reported that there has been a bid confirmed that has been accepted by Florentino. Arsenal's bid was accepted, which which subsequently now is up to the player and the agent to make the move. They have not answered the phone. They have decided not to make the move happen. They have completely uh, deaded this deal themselves. From the Florentino side, they want the move to happen. They want the player off their books. They want the player sold. And they want the player making his move to Arsenal, preferably because they are receiving more money from Arsenal than they are receiving from Juventus. Arsenal have bid around a package that is worth around 70, 70 to 80 million, where Juventus have bid a bid of 30 million plus uh, Kulusevski, which they do not even want. Where Arsenal have Lucas Torreira, who's currently on loan at Florentina, which is worth 15 million, which they will be paying for in the summer regardless, even if the uh, Dusan Vlahovic deal does not go through. The Times have reported today Arsenal have a number of attacking targets this month. However, it is looking more and more unlikely that this deal for Dusan Vlahovic will happen. Juventus haven't even, haven't even put their own bid in until today. And now it lo looks more and more likely that he will end up going to Juventus. Uh, Fabrizio Romano has earlier reported, as Dizzy put in the chat. Let me get it up. Dizzy, Dizzy you put in the chat something. Are you still here? Oh, Dizzy. Yeah, Dizzy's there. Dizzy, you put this in the chat earlier. Uh, who reported this? Breaking news. Uh, Vlahovic agreed a seven, point, a 7 million salary with Juventus, incoming 60 million bid from Juventus. So it looks like Vlahovic will be joining Juventus. Um, according to Gazella Della Sports, I can't fucking believe it. Uh, they will offer 60 million euros to reach an agreement with 7 million uh, pounds. It just goes to show you if you have clout, you can get whatever girl you want. Literally. It's not clever, bro. But this is this is this is the problem with this football club, man. We've been sinking in a hole, and we're missing out on all these opportunities of such key players for our future. And it's going to keep happening until we make big changes. It's a, it's a shame he, he might go to Juventus. This is why I don't trust Eddie and Arteta with these. Like, and same, bro. Like, you know, you know what? Yeah, Juventus. He's going to play under Allegri, and Allegri is a a top manager, better than yeah, his yeah. rookie in it. Like, you know what I mean? This is why I don't get carried. This is why. I, I, they need to put their money where their mouth is because every time we miss that on top players, we do this every single time, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of this. Uh, uh, official proposal in the next hours to sign Dusan Vlahovic, uh, Vlahovic immediately. <sighs> Ongoing talks. It's mm. up to Dusan in case he joins Juventus. Alvaro Morata will be an option for Barcelona again. Morata would be be still open to join yeah. Barcelona. Let's see. What yeah. a snake. He's going to join Barcelona. Locatelli part two. Fucking hell. You see? Yeah. You see? You see, we do this again. We, we, you see? You see, we've lost another play. This is why I do not trust this manager and Edu. You see? And you lot, I told you, we're not going to get to... There's no... There's no. I told you, we're going to finish seventh. End of. What, what else? Yeah, what the hell? hell? Had this enough. is done. Yeah, we should have got Marshall, man. If anything, fuck this man. <laughs> Marshall, is... Marshall, 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 man. Marshall, right. I'd rather eat grass than get Marshall. Marshall alone, okay. man. This I'm is what man. he said. I'm this is what he shit. said an hour ago. Nothing's changed from an hour ago, guys. Nothing's changed. All he did was he said the same tweet, but with a picture. But in this tweet, listen to what. It, read this part. After Arsenal, Juventus will He's try all about to. The clicks. Yeah, bro. He literally just put us in there. Bro, this guy makes a fortune of fucking Arsenal tweets, man. 
Is that That's probably his most liked tweets and shit. Know, he just tries to get us to bait. Look at this one. This one says, this one said, we recently re received an important bid for Vlahovic. Yes, you recently received a bid from Arsenal. Yeah, but do you know, no, but he, the president of Fiorentina came out and he said he never received a bid from Arsenal. No, we've received uh, important bids for Vlahovic. Important bids. We received numerous bids. That's what that means. This is confirming the Arsenal bid for uh, for for uh, Vlahovic. I can't not believe we've got Locatelli part two. Only, exactly. Only, we do this not every not single only. time we do this bullshit. One, one, one day we're going to no try point. one of these things and we're going to pull it off. One second. And then we'll no, be no, happy. The, the, the player we'll have will be absolute quality. You have to take I risks. Think. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yo, Conor as long King as you have backups, what's wrong with taking risks to Conor try King and punch King. above our weight, man? Yeah, but there's, yeah. there's yeah. no backup. That's the problem. There's well. no backup. We're, well, we're panic stations. We're 24 days into a transfer window. Panic stations. We're looking at this Isaac. Yeah. He, yeah, okay. He, he looks like a, a decent up-and-coming player, but he scored four goals all season, man. Brandon, he's Ooh. only 22, bruv. He will get better. He's only 22. Yeah, I know, but he's not going to get us top four this season, is he? Guys, We're not gonna get, guys, I don't think we'll get top four at all with this manager, mate. We're going to finish seventh anyway. Let's move on. Let's move on. Oh, everybody here. Yeah, move on. We're going to get angry about it. Everybody here is going to say the exact same names anyway. So yeah, so yeah, yeah, we're going to get angry. We're going in circles all day. Talking what about, about Dom, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, man? We need let's to... I'll take Calvert-Lewin. I think the field would be way too high. I don't want Calvin Lewin because uh, right now I think it's a I think it's going to be extortionate amount of money, especially the fact that they're It'll be like hundred mil. How much do you think it'll be for Calvin yeah. Lewin? Uh, 50, 100 mil million is English. Nah, hundred. I'll take it yeah. forty. I think forty yeah, million should be good for it's you. Not, uh, forty million. Are you in two thousand and thirteen? It's, it's bro, not. Bro. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, bro. guys. Guys, <laughs> let's let it. Let's 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 move We're past. Saying, let's move past the stuff that's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah let's move past the stuff. Not gonna happen because Dominic Kamalu is not gonna happen. Jonathan Isaac, uh, Jonathan Isaac is gonna We're be very difficult to get on at this point. Lahabit looks like he's going to Juventus. All of this, this whole summer, oh, every single failed thing the again. We failed again. Waste of time. We failed again, man. Time after time. Let me, yo, Tommy, you're my every guy. club fails to get players. Okay, let me, let me. We let need me to get over. Guy. Let's get over it. Let's move on to the next topic because this is we're going to be here all night if we keep talking about the same guys. But now, Alexander, uh, Alexander Isaac, Jonathan David, all these guys are great. But the one guy who I have the most faith in joining Arsenal this window is this man right here, Ali, uh, Arthur Mello. Arthur Mello is close. As, we, as, we've, as we've reported numerous days, the loan for Arthur Mello is close. The, I'm hearing the loan might even be an 18-month loan from, uh, from Arsenal. Arsenal are looking to get Arthur Mello on loan. The, the star is set to, to, to move to Arsenal before the end of the window, as reported by numerous uh, reporters. In the next few days, we'll, we'll get an update again. Uh, uh, Italian source have said the loan move will, will go through and will most likely go through in the, in the coming days. It will be most likely an 18-month loan, so two years. It will be a two-year loan, and then from there, we'll see where we go. But right now, it looks like it looks like we're not going to be getting anything done. We're going to be uh, anything else done besides this one loan for Arthur Mello. That looks like the one signing that we're going to be making. And this is going to help us in the midfield because he's a midfield player. He's good technically on the ball. He's not, he's not the best... The, he's not the most defensive uh, player, so he's not a DM. He's going to be coming in. He's going to be more of like a, a regular cam. I've only seen him play. In the, I've only seen him play well in the Barcelona team. He played the other day for Juventus. I didn't really watch how well he played, but he is a player who's going to come in and help us. He's of a profile uh, similar. I'm not going to say similar to a Xhaka. I'm going to say more of an attacking. He's, he's more of an underdog. Yeah, I'll say more, more of a Georgina kind of guy, man. To be more honest. of a more of a more of a I think Jorginho is more deep line. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's Javi, more of a, like he's beat it, Javi back in. He keeps the ball ticking, but he definitely offers us an option, in my opinion. When Danny Sabayos part two. When he comes in, we're gonna be playing, yeah, very similar to Danny Sabayos. When he comes in, he's gonna be playing more of a role where him, Shaka, would, would be rotated. And and I think Thomas Partey will be a mainstay in the team and he'd be rotated with Lakonga. And, and then Odegaard and Smith-Rowe will be rotating. So no matter what, we'll imagine our best lineup going forward could be 
with him, Pate, and Odegaard in the midfield. That would be our midfield three. Very, very technical, very good passing. And he's coming from a Barcelona system, so he's going to be very good. This was a guy who a couple years ago was going to be compared to was compared to Xavi. So I don't know if those things are a little bit too a little bit too much of uh, a praise for for people comparing him to Xavi. But Man City have looked at him before. Arteta's Arteta looking at him. I'm not surprised. The main thing that I have to say is, what does he bring to our midfield? What will he bring to our midfield? Because our midfield right now is lacking bodies. We're kind of just trying to bring whoever we want to bring. But I, I, he's failed. He's failed yeah, at but- this. He's worked well at Barcelona. If he comes to Arsenal and he does well, hits the ground running, maybe he could turn into a good signing. At the moment, I want to know what everybody else thinks because I've spoken wrong, for so long. Wrong type of player, mate. He's the wrong type of player. 